There we go. All right. So my name's Tav. It is um, 5th of May, 2020, and we're going to be editing part three of chapter eight. Happy Cinco de Mayo to, to all those who it applies to. And uh, well, to everyone, I suppose. Um, hope you had a wonderful day. And um, we're here to get some editing done. And um, now I'm rambling. So let's get the rolling. Yeah, this is part three of chapter eight. Tendrils writhed from the void stained sky above. Greens, reds, and violets swirled together swirled together in a viscous fluid like manner, slow, sickly swirls, parting and parting in dripping pools as the ten, as tendrils thrust themselves through. I think this needs to be one sentence. I don't think it needs to be two. Slow, sickly swirls parted in dripping pools as tendrils thrust themselves through. Far off in the distance, they'd slam into the ground. They slammed into the ground, throwing ash and dirt into the air, sometimes shattering the skeletons of distant derelict buildings. There you go. Some setup. Uh, I am actually going to turn my fan on. I am. I can't do without it. I know it's going to cause a little bit of a hum, but I am so warm. Sorry. <laughs> It's not even pointing at me. It just keeps the air moving. Silas, has made, Silas had finally made his way to the surface. Not far from the hatch sat a slender form on a pile of rubble. The horns made it clear... The horns made it clear it was who he was looking for. He stood a moment, paralyzed in fear. How could he approach her without upsetting her? She was some kind of powerful s void. I'm going to call her a being. One wrong move... And he was sure she would... One wrong move and he was sure she could reduce him to ash like the stuff he was standing in. Should he announce himself? Just walk up? His mind started racing. As, the, as thoughts sped by, he felt himself drifting away again. No, 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 he hissed. He forced all the worries and concerns away. If sorry vaporized him, he wouldn't even know it. C'est la vie. I believe there needs to be an accent mark in here somewhere. I believe that's cest... Oops. Nope, that's wrong. Wrong C. That's, this is wrong. And I'm going to go copy the... Uh, I believe there's an accent mark on the V. Is there not? No. Oh, well, that's... I don't know if I can really use the name of the song. No, I guess not. I thought there was for some reason. Alright, well, now we've corrected the spelling of C'est V. And, uh... Oh, actually, I've been started... <laughs> Whoops. I've been reading here, and, uh... Well, we're, we're here. I accidentally didn't start the visual screen stream, but here we are. Uh, and this was spelled C-E. It was say love, cat, C-E, love-E, which is real wrong. Once his mind was clear again, he just did, he just did what he felt like doing. Um, um. Once his mind was clear again, he simply let himself do whatever felt right. Sorry, he spoke as he approached her. She was quick to her feet, a spindly being wrapped in white robes. A hood covered her head, with her horns protruding through loose cut, through cut holes cut just... Okay, this, this paragraph looks like it's a shit show. Alright, hood covered her head with more a hood covered her head with her horns protruding through holes cut specifically for them. Pale platinum hair hung delicately from the shadows cast by her gold trimmed hood. What are you doing here? she barked at staff in hand. I was looking for you. Who told you where to find me? Speak. 
blue. Oh, good, blue. Sorry. Silas raised his hand above his head. Hands above his head. Torval. Ah, that's right. We fixed that to Tessin. Ah, that reminds me. I have to. I don't know why I'm not remembering to just get my journal out, my booklet out before we begin. But here we are. Let's get this out into the proper page of records. Uh, where are we? Looks like I have a little bit of room to continue on this page. Although, you know, I'm just going to start a new one. So today is the 5-5 live stream notes. And I'm just going to do a few things. Um, this is live stream notes. Maybe I will turn the face cam on just because. Where is it? Ta-da! Hi! I'm not quite a mess, but I'm not 100%. Let's just re carry over some information. Um, oh, that's how you spell that. Uh, Tessin. Sorry is an... I'm re rewriting some of this, so I just remember for continuity's sake. Sorry is an Archon. Uh, Tessin is the brother... Uh, good. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I changed his name, but that's okay. That, she slammed the butt of her staff into the ground. That weasel, how dare he? Look, I'm just here to talk. Kai tax. He, he what? Sorry, Spat. What did he say? More lies, more omissions. Every word dripped with venom. You don't think I'm upset and confused too? You don't think I'm having a hard time with, the, with all of this? Come on. This is bullshit to both of us. We're just coming at it from different angles. Is he going to bring up the fact that he didn't know she was a so Oh, God, I hope that's not... I truly did not believe my lord was capable of such deception. With me. Me, his loyal servant. Her voice devolved into wavering mess. She slumped along the shaft of her staff. Yep. Resignation overtook her rage. What's the point of what's the point in questioning? She sat back down on her pile of rubble. He wants us to talk, sorry, that's all. To what end? She scoffed. Who am I to question the will of a god? Smart. Sorry turned to him so quickly that Silas was surprised she hadn't given herself whiplash. It's always smart to question those in power. They'll never give you a straight answer, but it's better than taking their word for abs as absolute law. What would you know? She seized, her horns turning to look out at the or at the ruined city in the distance. What would you know of gods and their wills? Honestly, nothing. But no offense, what do you know? Once again, her head snapped in his direction. Nothing, apparently. And there we are. Same place, different angles. Sorry cringed as she returned to staring at the ruins. Silas slowly moved to join her on the pile of rubble. How many times did I say pile of rubble? Pile of rubble. Um. Hmm. What's another way we could say this? <laughs> Why not? May I? He motioned to a spot beside her. After a quick glare in his direction, sorry slid over. The two figures sat on two figures sat on a pile of stone, staring out in the distance. Into the distance, not a word was spoken between them. Silence, silence, as they watched. There was nothing. Did I leave an ass in there somewhere? Is this? Is there? Yes. There was nothing but silence as they watched the void shatter what remained of this dead world. It's not you, her voice shook. It really isn't, and I know that. It's, she took a deep breath. It's devoting your life to someone, to something, only to not be good enough in the end. He turned to her. Sometimes, lifetimes of devotion, sometimes, of, lifetimes of devotion, lifetimes of servitude. And what, and when it matters most, she turned to face him with, with her horns. It was not enough. Sorry, an outsider from worlds away. It had to be. It had to be someone else. Why? 
Why couldn't it be me? A tendril slammed down to the earth. Rock. Rock and metal. Well, nope, nope. Rock and ash. Rock and ash flew into the air. A gust of wind blew past them. Her short platinum hair flowed outside her hood, dancing on the gust. Kytex cares a lot for you. I know. Her voice was shaking again. I know he. He had no control over this. That. The connections. They are random. Talos raised a brow. Surely you know you are not the first. He nodded slowly. Sorry nodded in return as her gaze returned. Sorry nodded in return as her gaze settled once more on the violence in the distance. Kytax would find himself connected to mortals, only for them to vanish. Parix mentioned others. He mentioned erasing them. Silas's voice trailed off. Parix. Her voice became her voice became low and seething. Parix. You know him? Silas chuckled. Sorry nodded slowly. Indeed. Parix is the herald of the void. The man in yellow. The deceiver. He plays on mortal fragility and, imp and impermanence to sell them on the benefit of drawing from the void. The more we draw, the greater the pull. The more we use, the more we consume. The more we are consumed. The void is unforgiving, but when mortals are promised eternity, they would risk they would risk dealing with demons that would devour them whole. Like Kytax? Sorry slumped forwards. A low guttural chuckle came from her slender frame. Kytax is literally the devourer, she turned to Silas. That title will be yours upon your union. I hope it is one you are prepared to live up to. What does being the devourer entail? Silas rubbed his knees nervously. Sorry, shrugged. As my lord puts it, it puts it a constant state of insatiable hunger. Otherwise, not much different than how you exist now. I'm, I'm not going to eat my family or something, am I? Sorry, sat upright. Though she had no eyes, Silas could tell she was tracking something in the distance. Following her gaze, he saw a long, thick tendril slowly dropping through the liquid sky. It writhed slowly with much intention. That is really up to you and your resolve. Kytex has known me for centuries and has never once shown any, des any desire to devour me. Whether it was out of kinship or he merely finds me undesirable for such purposes, I cannot truly be certain. But were he to ask, Sari's horns tracked the tendrils that slammed to the ground, shaking the earth they sat upon. I would go to him without hesitation. You'd die for him? Lord Kytax? She's turned to Silas. Of course. It would be the highest honor to give my life. It, it would be the highest honor to give my life for him. Is that what you really believe? Or is that what you believe you should believe? She stared at him. Her lack of eyes did not diminish the scorn in her gaze. You would have me question my faith? I would have I would question whether it's your faith or whether it's what you've been told to believe. How dare you? Her lips cr crawled into a snarl. How dare you question my centuries of devotion to my lord? Would you have served him even if it, w it would you have served him if it wasn't out of obligation? Is I obligation? Silas nodded, his gaze fixed on the te thick tendril dragging itself across the ground, crumbling stone and mortal made architecture beneath it. He said he saved your life. The obvious response is for you to feel you owe him something. But what do you really owe him? After so long, what keeps you loyal to him? Sari's face shifted into every emotion, every emotional direction until her features landed on disgust. How dare you, she spat as she folded her arms across her chest. Food for thought. Miss Archon. Silas watched as the tendril receded into the sky. Sari snarled. And what of you? If you, if, if, you find my devo if you find my devotion so frail after all these centuries, how could you even begin to understand the gravity of this situation? Hmm? How long have you known, my lord? Days? Weeks? Months? Perhaps even mere years? That is nothing compared to how long I've li I have. Oh, I have to come back through and make sure she, she doesn't use conjunctions. I don't think she's uh, had a problem yet. I would have caught it probably. Okay, let's assume I caught it all. Silas shook his head. I'm not here out of servitude or devotion. Then why? Why are you here? Why did you come here? She was nearly in tears. Why? 
We could have died together, he and I, but now you, you're here, and you're going to take him away from me. You're going to take this, you're going to steal Lord Kytax from me, you filthy mortal. She swiftly raising, rising to her feet, Sari reached for her staff with a long, pale, thin, with a long, pale, thin arm. Delicate fingers wrapped around it, clenching it so tightly that Silas was sure they could have, they could snap, uh, could have snapped his neck. I'm, I'm not taking, I'm, I'm, ugh. I'm not taking it from you, he bellowed in reply. You're coming with us. Sorry froze. What, is he not telling you things too? Sorry's grip on her staff became less certain. Coming with you? Salas nodded. Back to Earth, where I'm from. You're coming with Kaitax and I. Yeah, you're right. I don't know why that wasn't marked, but... Greg really knew what was going on. Excuse me. You mean he's not... She could feel the remnant sensation of tears burning behind her horns. He's not throwing me away for someone new? She slid down the shaft of her staff until she was seated beside him once more. I thought he was getting rid of me. Sorry. Why didn't he just speak to me? He seems to be very short on words. Lord Kaitax used to tell me everything. He used to share all his thoughts with me. The Archon took a deep breath, and then he stopped. Everything became quiet. Then the other mortals started connecting to him. I thought... I... I was certain they were meant to replace me. But they always disappear, and Kytax would forget, and I'd be relieved. She sniffed through her small, round nose. And then you happened. Sorry, I'm not here to replace you. I'd never want that. But you are replacing my lord, aren't you? She turned to him. That's what's going to happen, isn't it? I'm not really sure. Kytax seems to think we'll just share a body, that he'll stick around to out, stick around but be in the back seat. I'm not certain. I'm not sure. He wouldn't say that. I'm not sure he really knows what's going to happen. Sorry, sat upright, clutching her staff with confidence. Then you must understand, I live to serve Lord Kytax, not you. I will not serve you in any way. Salas nodded with a chuckle. Good, because I don't want servants. I'd appreciate it if you stuck around and helped if necessary. But I have no intention of giving you orders of any kind. That's just not that's not who that's just not who I am. She relaxed ever so slightly. But you never answered my question. Why are you here? Why did you risk your entire life to come to this place and still live in a state so near to death? Silas looked out over the writhing tendrils once more. Kaitax gave me an offer I couldn't refuse, and to be honest, he turned to her with a smile. I don't care how he teased me and the I don't care how he teased the information out of me. He's shown me what I wanted, how I know it can be done. If I survive, I'll be a better person for it and every better person every way for it. Is it worth the risk? His eyes wandered aimlessly. I'm a terrible father. Probably a worse boyfriend. I he studied the palms with hands. I'm weak in mind, body, and soul. In every way. I'm weak. I failed the people I love too often. You intend to use the power of a god to protect them? Silas laughed. I actually keep forgetting about that fact. What could be more enticing than the strength of a god? A small grin crossed his lips. It's personal. I see. There was a long silence, filled only with the thumping of tendrils on the surface of the dead world, and the sound of shaken ash settling back into its resting place. It shimmered and glistened before them. Eh, that's good enough. It's weird. But it's okay. <sighs> they are the remains of my ancestors, those who do not live to see the halls of Cataxia, and that, she pointed up to the dripping sky, is their blood, mixed with the essence of the void and the blood of our Lord Kaitax. Figuratively, or very literally, when the void rends mortals in droves, it separates their fluids from their flesh. The flesh becomes ash and the blood is, is pulled toward the void trapped under the remains of the atmosphere, muddled together with the bile of the void, and, in our case, the blood of the god we ensnared. Silas was repulsed, but at the same time sickeningly curious. Uh, that's not the right word. Morbidly curious. The sky grew dark as the swirls of blood and bile came together to form dark, unholy clouds. A heavy, damp feeling filled the air. The sense of burning ozone the scent of burning ozone surrounded them. It is going to rain. Green lightning shot across the sky, casting long shadows across the land, so blindingly brilliant 
that when the second strike came, Silas had to close his eyes. We must return below. Sorry, I sighed as she hopped off her rock. Silas pursed his lips. The timing was poor. He, f he, f he, he felt as though they were close to coming. He felt as though they were close to coming to some level of understanding. As they made their way into, as they made their way to the surface hatch, something began falling from the sky. Small shards of what felt like glass pelted their skin. Sorry, through the hatch, through the hatch. That's the wrong through. Sorry threw the hatch open with little effort. Get in, now. With a nod, Silas did as he was told. Sliding down the narrow passage, Silas could barely hear Sorry moving behind him. When his feet hit the bottom hatch, he began to panic. Lift up and pull to the right, Sorry whispered gently behind him. Sliding his feet against the latch, he, he, Silas lifted it gently and gave it a small kick to the right. Sure enough, the slight lift was enough to force the latch's release. Silas had zero time to prepare as he slid out into the hall. Quick to regain his composure, he turned to the tunnel, waiting for Sari. She came down with much more grace and poise, though he offered her his, his hand at the bottom regardless. She took it without thought as she stepped into the hall. When she realized what she'd done, she released him and recoiled. Silas stood surprisingly su stood surprised and hand saw stretch. Hurt? Was all he could think to say. No, not not at all, just... She wrung her hands together before bolting them straight, bolting them straight to her side. Her staff tucked under her arm. Inappropriate. They stood in. A, they stood a moment in awkward silence. Translucent red and violet flecks came clinking down the access pipe during dusting, ugh, dusting the floor beneath them. Crystallized blood. Sorry, murmured. Blood mixed with the mist. It turns into crystals when released from the atmosphere. It rains shards capable of cleaving a person in half. It rains shards on Earth too. Silas closed the hatch. As he turned to face Sari, she, he found himself once more surrounded by the tax inspectors. What do they find so interesting? It has been centuries since mortals set foot in these halls. They whisper and mutter over whether or not you'll be successful in your bid to save Lord Kaitax. Can you hear them? You can hear them? Clear as crystal. Does it bother you, hearing all their voices, just following you around? Sari sighed heavily. It used to bother me far more than it does now, but it reminds me that I am never alone in the halls. I just wish they'd be more civilized. The things they say sometimes. She was wringing her hands together again. Is that the... Uh, yeah, thank you, Grammarly. They are unfair, and I cannot argue with them. What do they... I simply... I will simply say that they insinuate that Lord Kytex and I have... Hmm, physical relations. I see. Oh, I forgot to mute my video capture device again. Hold on. Yeah, I don't think that really matters. Doesn't seem to be picking anything up from it. I see. Why else would he accept to protect an aberration like my, such as myself? Sorry, I looked around at the specters. People of all shapes and sizes surrounded them. Different. Sh Different numbers of eyes and appendages. So get your extra limbs. Different numbers of eyes and appendages, tentacles, horns, no two seem to be the same. At a glance, there's, there seems to be no rhyme or reason to what your people look like, so... Silas waved around at the crowd. What's so abhorrent about, abhorrent about you? I think Silas's vocabulary gets a little too advanced for him. Um, like I said, eventually I'm going to have to come through and redo his dialogue so he actually speaks and either... I'm probably, I'm probably going to put him in Glasgow. So... Uh, I'll come back through and do some vernacular corrections later. But for now, it's just a matter of making sure he's actually speaking his level. And sometimes, the well, same with Daniel, they sometimes speak a little above where they should in complexity. So I gripped her staff tightly. I suppose, she looked around at the crowd. Taking a deep breath, she closed her eyes. I suppose, she exhaled deeply. I'd rather tell you than have you find out from Kai Tax. Silas looked around expectantly. Come. Sorry, I motioned down the hall. To my quarters. You are... He could feel a glare through her horns. To speak. Nothing more. Silas visibly relaxed. Oh, thank God. Sorry, I gave him a snort before passing the, cr the crowd and heading on her way. Alright, that should be... I'm gonna update that real quick. We're just gonna go ahead and check that. Make sure it's gone. 
Boom. Yeah. All right. So that's all set. Let's see how far, how long did this take? Um, this taking, I don't think it took an hour. I think we're only at a matter of minutes. Uh, let's see. Creator dashboard. Oh no, this isn't where you look. How bizarre. Back to Twitch. Nope. Channel. I really don't feel so good all of a sudden. <laughs> am I actually live? It says I am. I am broadcasting, right? Yep. Huh, I swore somewhere they told you how long they did streaming. <laughs> Oh, was that because I cleared it out after the last video? I'm going to the dashboard real quick. I'm still not 100% sure. Oh, it's only been half an hour. Why can't I? Oh, you can toggle it on and off. I see. It doesn't actually clear it. One viewer, 32 views. I don't even know. Is that the amount of people who have looked at my channel? Cool. I wish somebody would tune in. Tune in, please. Uh, so let's see how long the next section is. That or we'll find something else to talk about for a little bit if it's another long one. Oh my god, I'm hot. So, uh, what's about to happen is Sari's going to explain the gender system in the Kataxian, uh, in Kataxian society. And it's a little complicated and convoluted. So I'm going to try to give a precursor explanation of it before we get into her explanation of it to make sure it actually all... Oh, this is the end of the chapter. Yo, why does this have an extra page? Oh, this is page three. Page four is the last one. No. I guess we could finish chapter eight tonight. Okay. Uh, I suppose we have no reason not to. My back is killing me. Ah. All right. Let's, um... Let's do this, but let me let me describe the Kataxian gender situation, because it's they're it's almost like they're supposed to be hermaphroditic, but they're not. So, um, there's two sexual this uh, orientations or two sexual reproductive sets, and the idea is one is the female for all intents and purposes. It, um, well, this one's double the length of what we just read. It will just state the unborn uh, child or infant, and um, the other one literally sacrifices half of what it is to create the um, the offspring. So it's some weird split between. Oh, went too far. Is that it? Yeah, too far. Um, it's it's weird, and how it works is. Um, there's a ceremony, um, and you're given permission to reproduce. Basically, you get married, and uh, the, two, the two genders are glass and ash, and, and this is since they've become cataxians. They were something before, but they're not anymore. And since they're completely, there's no dimorphism, there's no morphism of any kind, they're all completely random. And I keep saying there's no such thing as genetics in the regular sense, so much as just everything is born pre-mutated by the void so i describe on earth i call it corruption and basically on earth people who are exposed to the mist slowly become corrupted the thing is on cataxia it's in them it's part of them corruption is part of what they are so everyone is born pre-corrupted which isn't even corruption it's just their state of being now so um ash are the ones who are would be cat there's no an ash or a glass can do anything. They're all the, uh, occupation-wise, they're capable of whatever they equally, depending upon their physical ability. And since there's no gender dimorph or sexual dimorphism in that manner, it doesn't matter. But what happens is, is when an ash and a glass decide they're gonna bind themselves, they are expected to reproduce. And what that pretty much means is the ash is no longer able to work to the fullest capacity of its ability. And actually, both of them aren't able to really work anymore because they sacrifice half of each of themselves and only one of them actually carries a child. So, and that would be the glass. And 
they both are reduced or rendered to reduced capacity to function in society in physical labor department if they weren't doing anything physical they could probably go right back to work but since they have sacrificed part of themselves to make an offspring that happens and then the offspring might not look anything like either of them it's still a crapshoot in that department so what happens is um i haven't described that in this story yet but uh when the issue started occurring and there were population issues with the fact that they have very limited space, they were, weren't able to dig out whole halls fast enough for the reproduction rate, which was insane. Uh, Kaitax install, instilled this uh, census thing. And the census is basically a all-knowing document that records every living person in Kataxia. It doesn't necessarily record their names, it just records their, well, it does record their names, I suppose. It records their birth name and their um, gender. And the gender or the sex is chosen, is predetermined um, before they're born or even before they're conceived. Pretty much what happens is if, if a couple goes up and says, we want to have a kid, the sen somebody will re they'll read the census and the census will say, well, if you want an ash, you can, have a, you can conceive now. Uh, and if they want, didn't want Ash and they wanted a glass, the consensus would say, no, you aren't open to have a glass. We don't need glasses right now. So uh, you go and uh, either have an Ash or don't have anything right now. And then you could consult the census later and the census could say, oh, okay, you can have a glass now. You have to do what the, cons what the census says. And what happened with Sari was her family wanted an Ash specifically because Ashes tend to be, tend to, evolve closer to more physical labor intensive and um their family or their orientation was that and no yeah their their idea was that they could um basically use this ash to support themselves it would be their caretaker it's not supposed to be that way taxis are supposed to be very individualistic once they have their children um, the couples can stay together, but it's not up to the child to ever raise the parents because the child is immediately expected to go out into the world, do their duty, maybe get bound if they want, have, and as soon as they get bound, then they reproduce and then they're out of service for all intents and purposes. So they were trying to game the system by having an ash and, uh, an ash that would take care of them and, you know, uh, an ash would never have to carry a child An ash would have much less sacrifice in that department. But what happened was, is the census said, well, if you're going to conceive now, you have to have a glass. And they were like, uh, we want to conceive now because we're getting old and we might die. So we'll conceive now, but we're going to jury rig it to be an ash. That's illegal. And technically the doctor who assisted, or the cleric or whatever, who assisted them in pre-gendering their child incorrectly was committing a capital offense. So um, they give birth to an ash just like they wanted. And the problem is the ash is programmed to be a glass and there is still some sexual dimorphism between them. So when they create an ash and basically all you're really talking about is maybe size versus size. And um, when an ash is born, they tend to go out and be, if they're, if they're going to do a career and not get bound, they go to the military side, they go to, um, guard duty, they go to uh, very labor intensive uh, careers. A glass, on the other hand, is more likely to go to a caretaker role. Uh, they're more likely to be more cerebral in that department. So what happened was, is a very cerebral ash was born, and that caused a problem with the census, and that caused a problem for Sari. Um, Sari was born Sarsen and Sarson was an ash and he was a mistake against the census and everybody was really upset and the worst part was he was the first he the worst worst part well not even the worst part but every taxi is different there are no two are the same but one th couple things they always do have is they always remain vaguely humanoid and um i mean they could be spindly as heck they could be rods but they still kind of maintain the the four limb system and a head kind of um but sorry was born a little different she was her the census 
the census was basically supposed to be a genetic command, and since they disobeyed it, they were they were pretty much creating an ash that should have been a glass, and it was born a glass in an ash. So the ash named Sarsen basically said um, basically became this pariah, and nobody wanted to deal with it because it wasn't meant to be; it shouldn't exist. Nobody had it was very taboo to mess against the census because of that situation. The census pretty much ordained what your child was going to be, and if you went against it, you were you were messing up your child. So her, her parents messed up their kid. And instead of them getting jeopardized or them paying for it because they were elderly, they were given a pass. Instead, the brunt of the punishment was taken out on Sarsen. And Sarsen basically eventually said, you know what, I, I, can't, I can't function like this. Um, this isn't going to work. I need to be a glass and I have to change who I am. And I have to have to have to be a glass because that's what my orientation says I am. And everyone's like, no, you're just a, you're just a corrupt and broken Ash. You need to stay an Ash. And, um, so Sari's forced into this kind of this expected role of her, uh, existence. And what happened is, uh, at one point she starts her eyes, she has eyes when she's born, but they start calcifying. And this is a very new mutation considering the taxis have been mutating for millions of years this one is incredibly new and incredibly disturbing so what happens is her eyes literally start growing out of her head and they become her horns or really i think they're more antlers and as soon as that shit starts happening people are like nope nope this is an abomination this needs to go away we need to get rid of this thing because and they were pretty much saying oh it's because it's a mutant that it's growing these horns uh taxis all have eyes different shaped eyes different pupil shapes different our orbit shapes, all different, but every Kataxian has at least some semblance of eyes. Sure, they can go blind, sure, they can lose the eyes, but nobody has horns growing out of their eyes. That's an aberration. That needs to die. So, um, they basically sentence her, A, B, and Ash trying to pretend it's a, a trying to pretend it's a glass, and, um, the mutation was conceived, was pretty much just seen as a side effect. So they're like, we have to get rid of her. She's, she's rabble rousing. She's screwing up society. Get rid of her. They send her to death. They send her to Kai Tax and Kai Tax is like, Oh, okay. Uh, no, instead of killing you because they see hate you so much, I'm actually going to put you in my service. So sorry. Uh, undergoes the horrific procedure of becoming a servant of Kai Tax and Kai Tax puts her back out in the world and says, if you guys don't listen to her, I'll kill you. And what does Kaitax really have invested in Sari? Nothing. Nothing at all. He does what is what what difference does Sari make to him? Nothing. Um, he just sees her as a early on, he just sees her as a tool, a means to an end, a way to torment his captors. And she's more than happy to use those powers that he gives her. So Sari becomes pretty much a thorn in the entire society's side. They hate her, they want her gone, and Kaitax is like, You lay a hand on her, she has permission to kill you all. So nobody ever lays a hand on her. To the point of the species, entire species going extinct and she's still standing. Nobody lays a hand on her. So back to the gender situation is um, Ash Glass pretty much just determines your reproductive ability. Either you carry the child or you so donate part of yourself to it. And it's not just like, you know, humans where it's ejaculate or whatever. It's a whole chunk of your being goes into this ch offspring. It's like part of you is gone now and you're all it also kind of ends up classifying what your work ability is or what your capacity towards working is ashes again tend to be because they don't once you start once once the glass starts just having a children they are diminished in their ability to really they can still do most things but the amount of sacrifice they have to put into it, they have to be really sure they want to do it because it is a very big sacrifice. It's a much larger sacrifice for a glass to have a child than it is for an ash to contribute to a child. And it's also taboo for an ash and a glass to break up. And it is a ta it is taboo for an ash to get with an ash or a glass to get with a glass because that's considered a pointless relationship. And honestly, that doesn't happen because that's not in the realm of Cataxian's ability to process relationships. So um, they're very kind of base and primal in that way but yeah so if you're a glass you are supposed to be the nurturing type i mean you don't even have to have kids you you eventually end up in either education or a um, doctor nurse um one of the notable uh, ones is, is a um 
horticulturist, basically, and also uh, she's actually an engineer and a technician. She's kind of a bit on the border cusp of what would be defined as a glass. Basically, she pushes herself well behind her, well beyond her physical capability to keep up with her with ashes, and by proxy, that pretty much means she can never be bound and never have kids because she's violating her. But nothing's wrong with her. She's fine because she doesn't claim to be an ash, and also she's performing a very useful duty. That's Yulia. She hasn't been introduced. She'll be introduced, I think, next chapter. Um, but yeah, so what happened was, is rather than go with what she was supposed to do, and that was to be an ash, and that means she was supposed to be labor, and that was means she was supposed to work, physical labor, um, Sorry was kind of broken in the fact that she had the cerebral patterning of a glass so that made it difficult for her to settle into the role of an ash and it was just created this problem in her head that just she couldn't get over and Kaitax basically indulges her and says okay if you want to be a if you want to be a glass you're a glass now and she's basically like no I still have bought the body of an ash and he's like no no you're a glass it's cool He's like, she's like, but I still have the body of an ash. And he's like, nah, nah, no, nah, you're, you're a glass now. Go on, go terrorize the world. And so she does. Sorry becomes pretty much the bane of the Kataxians' existence for the thousands of years she rules over them, lords over them from kind of the distance. She lets them do what they want, but when she wants to get involved, she gets involved and she'll wreck things. Because that's what she does. And she's very happy with that, and Kaitax is very happy with that too. So, and I describe her as spindly. Um, so technically a spindly creature would be more geared toward a glass and um, that's part of the issue with her whole existence is she is she would be considered a very weak ash or a very useless or a very physically incapable glass so she's, she's a glass who could never perform her duty of carrying a child and she's a very poor ash a very weak ash so you know, she didn't end up getting the anywhere. She didn't end up being a strong ash, like ashes are strong, and she didn't end up being um, able to reproduce like glasses are expected to. She did end up with the glass with a glass mind, but she doesn't have a glass. Technically, doesn't have a glass body. So she's technically honestly genderless. Sorry, is probably what you would call completely genderless or hermaphroditic, but. Or intersex but she has chosen obviously I mean if you think about it she should be talking speaking English she would be speaking Kataxian and I, I am working on developing that language um, but she chooses glass pronouns when she's being referred to and since everybody speaks English that translates to she um, I don't know what those pronouns really are in Kataxian. I am still working on um, developing Kataxian, which will be a derivative of Void. And Void is pretty much set. I'm actually not doing the Lovecraftian Cthulhu language. I'm crafting a, a brand new language around the dynamics of the Void. So... Taxi in itself will be a derivative of that language because for all intents and purposes they were void spawns so um, they died void spawns they lived most of their subterranean existence as void spawns in fact they were probably spawns before they even went underground they are probably spawns from the very beginning because they were the type of people to abuse the void that's more lore than I think you need but uh, that's where we're at so I might leave this at that because if I start reading this, this is double the length of what we just read and that took half an hour. We could be here for another hour and I don't think I want to do that. So we're actually going to call it um, quits for tonight. I'm actually looking at the screen to see what the um, camera looks like. <sighs> Nobody showed up, right? Nobody's here. One viewer is me watching myself. I know. I know what it is. I wish they wouldn't show that. Um, yeah, it looks like we're good. So we're on part four, the last part of chapter eight. Um, I think what I'm going to do is some people say you can put little googly eyes up on the camera. And so you know to eye contact the camera because I keep like looking around all over the place. 
So uh, I might do that just because that's an, uh, a an adorable idea and b it'll help me keep focused on. Like be looking at the camera. I keep looking at the um, webcam interface over here, and I need to be keeping my focus on here. And I'm kind of watching the little lag that happens between here. So uh, I guess that was a little lore, and I guess you could call that a little bit of a precursor rundown for um, Kataxians. I guess at the end of the day, they do have different internals. And that's pretty much all that. Different internals and different muscular capacity or different bulk capacities. Not really muscles in them. They don't really have bones either. Um, but different bulk and different internal capacities. That's pretty much the gist of it. And there's only really... It's kind of shades of gray, honestly. But um, one kind will lead towards more of the other end and the other kind will lead more towards the other end. Just how it works. And like I said, after describing Sari repeatedly, she kind of smack in the middle in every way, which means she's neither. So she uh, engenders herself how she sees fit. And Kaitax basically said, okay, that's the law now. And that's basically Kaitax's thing. He saw her as an agent of chaos and said, yes, I embrace this. I accept this. And if they don't accept you, good, I could kill them. So, and he was a very, very angry, spiteful god at one point. Like the Kaitax we know now, he's kind of this soft, dad figure type thing, kind of like Silas, just confused but well-meaning in the way. Uh, no, he wasn't that way originally. No, he was very angry for a very long time, and sorry is honestly what softened him. So, uh, we're gonna probably stop rambling. I'm gonna go back to the trader dashboard real quick. Yes, I am live streaming this on Twitch, and it's going to end up on YouTube. Uh, I have a complete backlog of all the streams I've been recording. I think they started at around chapter four. Uh, I don't remember what I did about one, two, and three. I don't think I recorded them or I did them. Oh, I did them on uh, IGTV. What a what a system that is. Nah. Uh, I've sat there with my phone like on my tripod, angled in a way to catch the screen, and it was just what's the point of that? <laughs> it was terrible. Anyway, I need to take a drink, and, um, so I should probably just end this. Oh, is Luca still asleep? I thought I heard her talking to me, and I've got Blue right here. Hi, Blue! So, we'll stop here. 53 minutes is good. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. I might go back to Final Fantasy. I don't know what I'm feeling like right now. Um... Maybe I'll come back and stream more of this, but for now, I think uh, we're going to call it a break, at least. So, I'm going to end the stream, and I'll be back. I actually kind of want to see if I can get a better camera. That doesn't look so great, but that's, you know, it's a built-in camera. I'm not using any fancy situation. And my microphone is over here. Uh, it's a uh, snow blue snowball, black color. I've got a pop filter over it and everything, so... That's one thing. I'm no pro at any of this. But when I hear people who don't have a pop filter, I'm like, guys, they're $10. Just get one. I am an amateur. I am not even amateur. I am like baby level produced productions. And I have a pop filter. $10. Just grab one. It's easy. And I do actually really like the Blue Snowball as an introductory microphone. It is. I like it a lot. And if uh, anything ever takes off, maybe I'll consider investing in another. I'm going to different microphone but for now it's a great little piece and that was like 40 something dollars so you can't go wrong to start with that so great little microphone I have another microphone here somewhere and I think it's a bit more industrial but um, I'm not gonna go dig it out this is the one I have that sits on my desk all the time it lays on its side and I, <laughs> I just use it for everything when I'm on discord or whatever it's it's everything uh, speaking of discord um, I'm gonna be opening one up for the series slash the game um and if anybody would be interested in join joining or stepping into that uh, they're more than welcome we'll get there um again this is the uh game friendly reminder there is the writing game the rp writing game that's going to be starting june 1 you can check it all out here it still needs a proper name here are the classes. We now have four out of six classes 
with their videos and that's really exciting they don't they take varying i'm not gonna say they don't take any work or they don't take much work but they take varying degrees of work and i gotta say they're all take their own level of intensity and i'm actually just really proud of them for existing at all because this means i'm really i'm really into this and um I might be trying to find a way to convert this into a physical game, not just something that's online. Which would be interesting, a word game. I think that actually might be a good idea. So, I've been trying to develop some kind of physical game. You know, I've already talked about games. I, I, games are, outside of writing, they're the next best thing for me. So, I play games. I want to make a game someday. This right now was me laying out a virtual game. I think I might want to convert this into a maybe a card game of some kind. That'd be cool, right? A little sci-fi card game type thing. I don't exactly have the following to get the kind of backing I'd need to do that, but uh, if I pitch it to the right people, maybe. It's possible. Anyway, so game starts. It's going to start June 1 unless nobody signs up at all. If one person signs up, it'll start June 1. If nobody signs up, I'll just keep pushing it back until somebody does and just keep harping on it. I think I post a couple times a day about it every day. Um, I think tomorrow, I'm not going to promise anything, but I'm going to try to get the audio answer video out because that'll be Friday's class. Problem, I, I, over, I, I think I already mentioned this, but over on YouTube, I accidentally uploaded Engineer with a typo twice. And then I uploaded Sigil um, Spawn Tamer with not a typo, but a graphic error. So I ended up having to re-upload everything, and I should have just saved Warden for the next day, but instead I uploaded three videos in one day. Like, they're, they're like, a couple, this one's, like, an hour away. These are, like, half an hour apart. It's, like, really bad, but, um, yeah, this one just came out. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm pretty happy with the whole system so far. So, if you want to check it out, there's a playlist. Um, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to link that playlist here. I'm going to, um. Uh, on YouTube, I'll probably link it to the... I always link it to the place that it's relevant to, so... I think we actually... Uh, I kicked it up to a whole hour. 58 minutes and 14 seconds. And I think I'll probably do something about world building eventually. And I actually... Um, I mentioned this last time. I had some ideas for videos. And I actually am going to do... To convert my... Uh, I did an old post on weird fiction an old blog post explaining why I was calling my fiction weird fiction, but really what it was was when I, back when I really was certain it was weird fiction, it really isn't. Um, I announced it when people were asking about genres, I would say weird fiction and somebody, it happened. I, I got a few passive like, oh, okay, that's, that's great. But I had one person actually confront me saying, um, that doesn't mean anything. Calling your fiction weird doesn't tell me what it is. And I'm like, but that's its genre. You asked me what its genre is. It's the Lovecraft Poe genre. And they're like, oh, there's a genre? I'm like, yes. Yes, it's a subgenre of speculative fiction. It's it's that existential dread department. And they're like, I did not know that was a thing. I did not know that's what it was called. I'm like, well, I'm going to go ahead and write an essay. So I wrote a short essay, a blog post. And um, I'm going to be converting that to a video essay. I have the uh, non-essay bits scripted up already. Where the heck is my notes? Are my notes on that? Oh, did I ever go over these? Addendums to the game. I think I already mentioned all this. Okay, some of this is, was telling myself how to do the class promos. Huh, I don't seem to find my video. There we go. So that, that'll also tie into why I don't use the Lovecraftian uh, tag, or the Lovecraft tag. I know that's what people look for. I know that's the tag that gets attention. And while I do check probably 8 out of 10 boxes for to fill in that genre, um, what I realized was... Um, It, the story covers... Let me see what I wrote in my notes. Hold on, I'm dropping the screen real quick. Where are my notes? There it is. So, what I wrote is... Um, let's see. 
Uh, at the time, I was calling it Lovecraft Light, as in it contained dreams, nightmares, eldritch elements, unknowable evil, insanity, but at the same time, it actively beat down the alone trope that is usually synonymous with Lovecraftian fiction. So part of Lovecraft is to feeling isolated and completely segregated from the rest of the world and alone in a state of dread. The Cataxians actively, actively fights that trope. So I cannot fully call it Lovecraft or Lovecraftian, Lovecraft light. It really is just um, urban fantasy with some, an edge of Lovecraft inspired eldritch horror, nightmare, insanity, madness, great cosmic unknowable evil. That's all there. But the loneliness and the isolation is not. And I'm sure what people have read so far have that there's only been a dabble of the horror and don't worry, we're getting there. A lot of build up. Like they say, uh, the first season's usually a pilot kind of thing. So you get some of, I think the first season actually, the first arc actually stands pretty strongly on its own to cover what the story's gonna be like. Uh, the second arc starts pretty bad, pretty dark, it lightens up, and now it's kind of kind of in that, yeah, hey, goofy fades, everybody's, you know, everything's okay, even though there's a, there's evil looming very close by, it's right there, but we'll just ignore it, so, um, temporarily, like, uh, the arc begins with Silas getting the crap beaten out of him and Henley running, or Horrix running, Henley, Horrix, whatever, running away, and, uh, he doesn't go far, he never goes far, he wouldn't, but, this arc is going to focus on Cassidy Jones, who was introduced in the first arc, because Cassidy uh, basically serves as the catalyst for the outright conflict between Horrix and Silas. Oh boy. So when I originally wrote Cassidy, she was just had no parents and I had no reason why. She had no parents. She had a, she was brand, her, her back was branded with a sigil and she was pretty much the one thing keeping the mist back. And for some reason, her house was loaded with crystals. Why her house was loaded with crystals and where her parents were, I don't, I never had an answer for. The sigil I had an answer for. That was important. And she still has one. She still has a sigil. I don't know if Silas mentioned it, saw it or not. Um, but technically it comes over her shoulder, so he may or may not have noticed it. I'll have to go back and make sure. I don't think he did. Um, but that's why she wears high collars and stuff like that to keep it hidden. So that's still going to be part of her character arc. And uh, she's she's really important for the conflict between Harx and Silas. So she this is about developing her and getting her into the story and getting her uh, front and center, or at least into the main cast. And I think I mentioned last night the main cast was Silas, Silas, Kaitax, Jaren, Daniel. Sorry, but really Cassidy kind of floats in and out. She's kind of like the third child of the group, and we're talking that there are two children in this group that are. One is literally millions of years old and aware of it, or thousands, I don't know where I've decided, sorry, is millions or thousands of years old and is aware of it, but is stunted in her maturity to an extent um, and is being encouraged to try to live, be a child for a little while. She could flip that on and off, obviously. And Cassidy is infinite years old and always is in the state of being a child. She can't, she's never, she, by the time she starts growing up, it, it's time to reset her. So it's kind of what happens to her is really kind of sad, but I like her. And there was no way I was going to ditch her character because she was really, really, but she was the center of the original series. She was, the entire series basically revolved around figuring out who Cassidy was and what to do with her. So that's what this arc is. This arc was going to be my attempt at revisiting the original series, so getting a little, it's a little rough to get there because we have to the original series didn't have that whole section of Silas coming home that had already been done that was off screen it was basically being told forwards and backwards and I sometimes lament that I didn't stick to that my guns on that but I like where it is right now and you could read it for free right here on thegataxis.com yawn I mean to click that pick an arc you could just click this and you could start right at chapter one there you go, a day in the life, right at the beginning. I'll get graphics on them eventually, because I do think they're a little bland or without anything on them, but um, we're working on it. We're working on it. 
you know, I'm always looking for ways to improve it. I removed the uh, Instagram feed. It was broken. I think it was because I was trying to ping my Instagram and I haven't posted it in a little bit. That's okay. So, um, also my uh, SEO analyzer prefers this web, this homepage over my old homepage and I, I, I don't blame it. But, alright. Um, now we're just finding things to talk about. And my throat's actually starting to hurt. So I think we're going to stop because I need water and there's no reason to take a pause to drink water. I may as well just end the stream. So, thanks for watching. Um, if you're on Twitter, I mean, if you're on, <laughs> if you're on Twitch, considering, um, what is it? So, so you can't subscribe because I'm not eligible for subscriptions. You can follow. Is that what you do on, twi on Twitch? Follow. Yeah, I've got three followers. Okay. So you can follow on Twitch and, um, I'll, I do these live streams pretty regularly. Um, if you're interested in social media, primarily, uh, Twitter and, um, Instagram. And I'm actually going to real quick, just put up the new banner. I created this banner that I ended up not using. Oh, it's not here. Let's stick it in here real quick. I'll just remove it. Doop, 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 image. Uh, let's use an existing one. <laughs> Should be this one. Let's see if this is inappropriate. Yeah. So this is the new banner that I have. This little one up here. Uh, up here. Um, I made it for gaming purposes. And I might be converting to it. I might make a... I, I kind of like the streamline of this one a lot. Let me see how that actually looks against this. I'm curious. It doesn't cut anything out in the text at all. But anyway, yeah, I kind of like it. It's got the, the book effect that I kind of really like. <laughs> um, yeah, I threw that one together because I wanted something so I could show my uh, action bars and my playing video games. So this one gets turned off. This one gets turned on unless there's a cutscene, in which case this one gets turned off because I don't want it on during a cutscene. This is I play fantasy games and RPGs or MMOs. They're going to be cutscenes. Um, but yeah, that's the new banner. I kind of like it. Um, They'll be on and off interchanged, but yeah, um, I guess I'm dragging this out now. So, um, let me turn that off. So yeah, my profile's not that great looking. Yeah, I don't really have a chin. I don't even think I have a chin. <laughs> Last minute self-deprecation. Anyway, uh, now it has been long enough and we've got the part, we went over our part and we, um, did a little bit of extra rambling so i think we're good to call this quits so part four of chapter eight is coming soon and uh we'll get to go through the whole thing and we'll just run through and call it quits when we're done with that and then we can update it on uh wattpad which i haven't updated on and it shows because my rankings on wattpad are sinking that's okay it's wattpad i wasn't expecting anything to come of it I'm just trying to find more public places to post it to maybe get some attention on it. Um, that was me reaching for my water. <laughs> um, I'll figure some more stuff out. I'm hoping I could find more venues to post it to. It's my eyes on it. Um, I'm well aware that at some point I'm just going to have to ask people to read it, but I don't want to do that. You know, it's like, hey, read my thing, and then it's like, oh, this is trash. And I have That's what happened with the original series, honestly. I asked people to read it, and someone went and read it. And they, they were right on a few points, but a few things I was a little disappointed about because they would have been answered how they kept reading. They were basically like, why are you setting up a mystery? And I'm like, because I'm setting up a mystery. You're supposed to read to get the answers to, to solve the mystery. Like, of course it's a mystery. That's how mysteries work. That, that, of course there's questions being established and weird situations being established in the first chapter. That's how a mystery works. You get some layout, you get an idea of what's going on, you get up some world building, you get a few little breadcrumbs that there's something wrong with the world. That was what was weird about it. I get that a few things I was doing a little wrong, and I'll accept those, but when she was actually, she, they, I really don't know if it was she, but when they were reading it, like I said, half the other half of the critique was, why, why aren't you answering all of these things? It's basically telling too much and not telling enough all in the same comment, and I'm like, I mean, I get telling. I did do some blatant telling early on. I was basically setting the scene as if it was a visual thing, and 
That's not how it really works in writing. And, um, and I was setting up a mystery. So I was laying the groundwork for some things. And this person was just like, why, 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 why? I'm like, read more to find out. <laughs> it's okay. Um, this is a very different approach. It's very linear. I'm on and off with how I like it. Um, especially now that we're in the episode department where it's getting a little more serialized. Which is less, less directly linear and more expanded. So, Anyway, I have officially rambled enough. I think we've really well breached the hour mark. And basically only half of this was spent reading. So I'm calling it a night. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, silence myself. And uh, I'm going to say good night. And uh, if you find us on YouTube, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Um, I post videos. <laughs> um, once I'm done with this editing phase, I'll be coming back and doing personal reviews of the chapters. Just, you know, a friend of mine who I haven't spoken to in a while uh, recommended or suggested I start doing um, like personal reviews on what each chapter means to me or where my mind was when I wrote it. And I think that's a kind of a cool idea to address. So. Those will be coming once we're done with the editing. So we're almost done with eight. So we have nine, ten, eleven. We have three more chapters. And I know one's going to be a doozy to edit because it is all over the place. So that's going to be fun. All right. Enough rambling for the, like, fifth or sixth time. And uh, I might be back with more streaming. I might be done for the night. I'm not sure. So not this, though. I don't think I'll be coming back to this. I think we're done for this for the night. You know, I'll come back with more video games. So anyway, for realsies, good night. And thanks for watching.